Welcome to today's show. We're down here in southwestern Wyoming hunting mule deer. It turned cold and snowed and it's going to be a great hunt. We're down here with my buddy Wendell Fronten. Uh, just an uh, opening day for us. It's a nice little four point. I did see a, a really good uh, buck but his back tangs were a little short and went up through the Quakers. So stay tuned to a great show. This year I'm taking Ike along and both of us have permits and both of us are going to hunt trophy mule deer down in southwestern Wyoming. So come along with me as we go down hunting trophy mule deer in Wyoming. two bucks here, one like a 25 inch four point, but always come and check this bench in here every time I hunt here because there's always always a buck or two in here and sometimes there's as many as, I don't know, 10 or 12 bucks. Right down there, you see that Quaker patch? Right in front of it is a mule deer. There, he's going straight away now. That's four point, he's gonna come up. You know, we come down here to hunt in southwestern Wyoming and it snowed. And while I'm down here hunting uh, mule deer, Ike is up in uh, the Arctic and he got snowed in. A storm of a 50 year storm came through and put 12 foot drifts and froze the lakes up. And he's still sitting up there in a Quonset hunt trying to get out. We're down here in wonderful balmy Wyoming. We've hunted here 13 years maybe and only got to hunt uh, two or three times that we've had snow like this. So this is gonna be a treat and we should be able to see a lot of good bucks this evening. Well folks, we got two good bucks there, but the best one that you're looking at there, he's got really good fronts and he's about 24 inches wide, but his backs, if you look there, they're really what we call claw crab. He's not really got anything for the backs, but he does have a cheater. We'll keep looking. That is a trophy buck. Look at him, folks. Walking away. It's not real wide, but he's got really good back tangs. And his G4, which is his front point, goes. One of them is as long as his back tang. And he's got a point, inline point, coming off one of his tang, back tangs. We're gonna uh, pull away. I think Ike's coming in tonight and he might wanna hunt this buck. That's a really good buck. He goes out, he's 20, probably almost 27 inches. He's just now went in the Quaker, so we're not gonna wanna um, do anything to him right now. But he's definitely one of the bigger bucks we've seen. As you can see when he goes, his rack goes like this and he's walking, so it's sticking out there a ways. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm doing a book right now on uh, trophy mule deer hunting in the sage country like this, and people just will go right by this type of country and don't think there's bucks out here. What they do, there's two reasons they'll come out in this sagebrush and lay it down. First of all, the wind blows out here and you know they got that heavy coat on waiting for winter and they get hot but if they can get out there in that sagebrush where, the, where it's blowing that wind will help cool them down. Also when they get out there and lay down they're away from everything. Nobody that I know really goes out and hunts this kind of country. If you're hunting country where there's sagebrush flats and sagebrush coolies you want to really look those over because those bucks go hide right down in there during the hunting season and I found them doing that many, many, many times. The one laying down is uh, it's a bigger buck and we're going to go around and get above him and come down on him, take a good look. He looks like he might be a shooter, he's really got real long points. So. Stay tuned. Well, we snuck around and got above that buck. We get up there and I peek over and look and he's gone. This is one of those areas where the bucks will come in and uh, water right here and then they'll ease off into this brush and sagebrush and Quakers and lay down and spend the day. I've caught 
a lot of nice bucks laying in here and watering right here. So we're gonna take a look and see if that old buck is in here with these three points. The competition is on. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I see a nice mule deer. It's going down. I'm scared now, Cork. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, let it. <laughs> well, you know, folks, you, you get the young whippersnappers here. You got Corky, Wendell's son, and, and of course my <laughs> son. And, and, you know, us, me and Wendell, we just kind of do our thing here and we'll look at a bunch of deer. But these two guys started in on us, old guys, saying they're going to find the biggest buck and do this and that. See, they're scared because we've seen two bigger mule deer than them. Now, now, see, they started this years ago. They're like, "Oh, the old man, we're gonna, we're gonna go get the two young whippersnappers. We're gonna kill bigger deer." I, we we don't tell them about our deer, so they don't even know how big a deer we see. It's because they're not seeing any. Oh yeah, it's right. Because there is no deer. Yeah, right. You just. I think uh, you. I think you old duffers go up on the hill and take a nap. And when it gets cold, you come back with a deer. Oh. A big deer. A big trophy oh. meal deer. Yeah. We just take our time and we're gonna kill a really nice trophy meal deer. You guys, you you guys are just young guys that just sit there and talk, 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 talk. You sound like two jaybirds. <laughs> Gee, well you're probably right about that. <laughs> Well, folks, it's turned pretty uh, better than it was this morning, and the bucks are out early. And Wendell and I spotted a uh, uh, buck's got two cheaters on it that Wendell's seen before, and uh, we're gonna need to slip right up here and get up and get set up. And uh, they're kind of moving their way through the sagebrush, and uh, see if I can't get a shot. But they're getting out there. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Well, I hit that buck and he went down like a ton of rocks. And if you notice there, that sagebrush and brush there is almost chest deep. Now here's the problem. We have to sit there and wait for a while, make sure that buck is, is down and out. Wow. So he come in here and we got the, the two old men, me and Wendell hunting and uh, Ike and Corky, Wendell's son, are over on the other part looking for a big buck. But I think they're gonna have a long ways to go to find a buck as good as this one. So uh, for now, the old guys are one, the young guys zero. <laughs> well folks, you saw me take that 180 mule deer with uh, two cheaters on him. Well, Ike is hunting at the same time down there, and this week we're gonna go along with him and see how good he does. This week we're in southwest Wyoming on the Fronten Ranch again. Corky's gonna show me around, guide me. We're gonna look for monster mule deer once again. We're looking for something unique, something a little bit different. Last time I was here, I shot a 31 inch mule deer. This time, I'm looking for something funny. Some got a little trash on him, something really unique, not the just typical four point. So come along with us as we search for something unique. Well guys, we're out here, Wyoming again, chasing mule deer. That buck is, uh, is a really good buck. He's got some, some weak back tines, um, so um, I think we'll pass up on him right now. So come along with us.
Now this is an old buck. I'll tell you something about old mule deer like this. He is now just rubbing these antlers off. When they get older and older like this, like I bet you this buck is nine years old, they don't rub their velvet off until later on in the fall. And that's what he's doing right here. And he's just taking his time. He's in his own zone. He knows the rut's gonna be coming on three weeks. So he says, hey, I better get this old velvet off so I can look pretty for the girls. Why most of these other bucks are completely rubbed off now. But notice here, he's real heavy bodied. He's just an old buck. And I bet he's got six inch bases. I think I gotta think about taking this good old buck. Dropped him. He's down. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at this big old gnarly bugger. He's got all kinds of stuff. Did you see him? He was raking. He's still got velvet. He's got all this nasty stuff on this side. And he's still got velvet. Congratulations to Ike on a really great deer. He's as wide as we thought he was. He's over 28 inches, he's heavy. But let's go back to the ranch where me and Wendell are setting this up because they don't know we've taken this buck of mine. And so we're gonna play a little joke on him up here. So stay tuned to this. Look at all the junk on this old boy. And you won't believe what he was doing. Reading? Nope. Look at this. He was, he was rubbing velvet on. Oh, it looks like it. 28. 20, 28 and a half. 28 and a half. Good work. Good work. Beats the heck out of my buck. What buck? The one you that, shot tonight? That buck is an inch wider than my buck. I only killed one. Where is it? Well, we can, we can I back it up. I told you I heard him shooting. I told you I shot <laughs> Back that sucker up here! Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm sorry we kind of uh, like set you guys up, but it was pretty kind cool. Of? <laughs> That's all right. I, uh, your buck is bigger than mine, width-wise. I, I will say that your buck is wider than mine, and your buck's probably heavier than mine. But mine is really. Nice looking. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week on Eastman's Hunting TV show. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. See you next week.